Hi, welcome to Evil Box Guitar Tuition. So my classic album inspection today is White Snake Slide It In. It's 40 years old today, released January the 30th, 1984. That's the uh, UK release. The US release and remix, I'm guessing, was um, in April 16th, 1984. So there's a, a kind of weird convoluted gestation to this. Um, after Saints and Sinners, you know, Mars D, Marsden goes, Moody goes, uh, I think Moody comes back. Um, she has Colin Hodgkinson on bass and uh, replacing Neil Murray and Cozy Powell on the drums. I think this is the line that plays Donington. Uh, this seems to be like a White Snake Commandos featuring Kerrang or something like that, I seem to remember. So this lineup uh, records the Slider In album. Uh, Mickey Moody comes back for something, co writes, and then leaves again. Um, uh, and this is produced by Martin Birch. Initially, Eddie Kramer was at the, the controls in Musicland Studios in Germany. Uh, if you're going to initiate, Musicland Studios is a really famous studio. It's in the basement of a hotel. So you've got this lovely luxury hotel in, Mu in Munich. Loads of bands stay there and record um, Queen, uh, The Suite, and Mac, Reinhold Max, one of the engineers there. Um, but anyway, so, uh, Eddie Kramer, yeah, he gets given a boot. I've never really rated his production anyway. Great engineer. Martin Birch comes in. So, the, the UK release uh, production is kind of very uh, open. The guitars are slightly thinner. It's got a kind of open, more open live drum sound. I think it's really good. Um, it's got a lot of punch. Uh, the US remix will have extra guitars supplied by John Sykes, who will join after the release, I believe. Uh, and will be remixed by Keith Olsen and we'll, we'll look at the kind of talk a bit a little about the differences but what I'll do is I'll just go through the um, UK release I think what's important about this album is it's a transitionary album and it actually forms a link with 987 The Slip of the Tongue in that it's quite cock rock at times I think uh, Coverdale's always had some cock rock lyrics like you know come and get it and you know Love Hunter and stuff like that um, but on this, the more kind of prevalent, uh, the, the sound, the lyrics have got more innuendo. But what's important as well, I think this is a really key point, is Coverdale is singing in a slightly higher register. So this is where he starts to make a rod for his own back. Uh, Coverdale's always sung in a kind of slightly lower register than the top note of the, the male tenor range, which is actually the top note uh, of C that the, the singers will know. Um, if you want to play that note on your guitar fretboard, I, I sort of play it fret 13 on my B string. Uh, so typically, someone like Coverdale will be singing uh, about a, a fifth or a fourth below that. You know, he'll maybe go up to the A below that or the G. And that, that's why also, you know, the, the deep tone of his voice, it, you know, it's that perception of that kind of rich, sort of lower sound of singing that Coverdale does. But he's not really singing much lower. Um, he's just not going to those slightly higher notes of the Bon Scott Wood, Ronnie James Dio, Graham Bonnet and so on. Uh, occasionally get up, but on this album he, he utilises that part of his vocal a lot more. He will continue out in 1987 and uh, Slip of the Tongue, um, a bit more screechy. Uh, and I think that's one of the problems is later on he struggled to replicate that. Whereas if he'd stayed in that kind of um, slightly lower register uh, that you hear more on purple and early white snake it's blues register let's call it um he would have coped more as he got older um uh, he actually had some throat problems after this and i suspect that's probably possibly why um but um yeah mel galley's on guitar for this album uh so it opens up with gambler i'm going for the uk running order here um this has got a nice keyboard intro kind of a, a sort of chromatic um keyboard line chord line a uh, nice stompy riff. Good arrangements on this album. Every single track is under four minutes or just over four minutes, apart from Slow and Easy, which is just over six. Um, uh, the length of the album is 40 minutes. Um, White Snake, those early White Snake albums always had a, that, about that length, 38 minutes, four minutes, 41 minutes. Always had good arrangements. This is a really good opening track. I really like it. Um, it's got fairly sensible lyrics. Um, then next up, you've got Slide It In. This is from my Coverdale, um, 3 minutes 20. I'm going to slide it in right to the top and I'm never going to stop. There we go. Um, <laughs> so it's going full cock rock, you know, if you imagine this with bigger hair, um, MTV, 1986-87, you know, it is full on cock rock. Um, I realise track is really catchy. Um, <clears throat> 
then uh, it's a good track yeah then you've got standing in the shadow uh this track you realize it's actually don't break my heart again part two and i think that's another interesting thing about this album um you've got to remember in the states and i think john colodden is starting to do a and r for them they um you know, a lot of people in the States won't know those tracks. White Snake really didn't do much at all with those arms. They had an aborted US tour, um, Sandwich Between Maiden and Priest in 8081, which is reading about. And the bands didn't kind of hang out, um, which is strange. Apparently, um, the Priest, it seemed like Priest felt bad at sort of supporting members of Deep, um, having members of Deep Purple support them because uh, they're massive Purple fans. So it was all a bit strange. But anyway, Standing in the Shadows are a really good track. Um, but it's got a boom, 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 you like Don't Break My Heart again, very similar chords. There you go with Give Me More Time. This is another Cover Del Galli composition. Not as in this track, but it is catchy. And then the sort of classic Love Ain't No Stranger. This was a single, uh, his video for this. If you watch the video with John Sykes on this, you know, they bring Neil Murray back and he redoes the bass for the US remix. Again, we'll come at that. But Murray looks a little better. Colin Hodgkinson, why they got him, and he was left-handed. It always looks strange having, I know it's awful, but it always looks strange having left-handed players sometimes, but especially left-handed bass players can look odd if it's not the right balance. Looks good in the right heat, though. Um, but he, um, you know, they didn't really have the image. This is the thing. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, on the video, having Neil Murray, he actually looks like Ken John Sykes, actually works better, and Cozy's more rock. But anyway, a, a strong side one, no doubt about it. Side totems are slow and easy, more make love to me, slow and easy, you know, David. Uh, Mickey Moody's soul, co-writing credit, obviously that famous slide guitar. Really catchy track. Again, you can hear, this is a pre-runner to Still of the Night, so you've got the kind of Robert Plant-esque vocals, but you've got a boom, bam, boom, 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 you know, da 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 you know. Uh, John Colonna's obviously gone, oh, I'll do another thing like that maybe you know or they've said to Sykes can you write another riff of that cool octave thing but Zeppelin and of course he's come up with that in the mega still of the night but there's the lineage with this track there you got spit it out no prizes for guessing what these lyrics are about this is actually a really catchy track it's actually one of my favourites spit it out spit it out you know it's proper cult rock chorus Coverdell galley composition really good good arrangement um, nice kind of stonesy guitar riff on this there you got all or nothing. Um, now this is the one where you can really hear that vocal register. You know, you can hear him hitting the top C and the tenor range and going up to the D. Um, you know, if you're if you're a singer, a good comparison is, is put something like Rainbow in the Dark on by Dio. Try and sing along and you'll get A, B, C. And you'll hear that tone. When there's lightning, always, you know. And this is the same. Um and the riff here, ba -ba 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 -da 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 -da, it's kind of deep purplish, but it's not a far stretch from something like Children of the Night. Ba -ba -la -da 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 -da. Um, so again, a kind of pre-87 sort of vibe on this. Really catchy track. Um, I really like this. Then uh, track nine is the, it's the crap track, Hungry for Love. This is, you know, they could have just ditched this. Um, you'd have still had a, 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 or put another track on. Um, uh, then you got Guilty of Love again this is an up-tempo track again the, the harmony guitars on this it's very like straight through the heart from 1987 so it's almost like they've used this as a template this album's gone gold and certain elements of this have been reworked into that 1987 sound later on this album we'll go double platinum because uh, people will go back to it um, uh, for the when the 1987 becomes a hit but this did lay the groundwork it made number 40 in the USA uh, and they got sax and they played Rock in Rio and that so the profile went up you know people criticised the Coverdale for what he did getting disbanding that classic Mike Snake lineup. but that wasn't a lineup that was going to thrive in the MTV era I was reading Bernie Marsden's book and saying that you know someone said to me oh, there could have been his biggest queen but you know um the image of the band, the bluesy style, once you get into 83, 84, it's just not going to take hold in America. It's not. Um, and Mickey Moody and Bernie Marsden are great, but they just w wouldn't look right. So Coverdale, you knock him, yet yeah, maybe made a deal with the devil, but getting that lineup initially with Sykes, Murray and Powell, obviously they would be replaced, would bring him success. So the British version is really good. It's got a nice open production, really well done by Martin Birch. I think it was criticised at the time production, but I think it's good. 
The US version is remixed by Keith Olsen with extra guitars by John Sykes and the bass is redone by Neil Murray. The upshot of this, it's got more punch, it's got more bottom end. The other thing that Keith Olsen does, he does more of a radio friendly mix. So the Martin Birch one is kind of open and more expansive. Uh, this is a little more closed, I guess it's more compressed, but it's better for radio. So you've got to remember people drive in the cars, have cassettes and have radios on in the car in the US. So Keith Olsen's got his spot on on this. Um, uh, so the, the running order for the US release uh, started off with slide it in and it's slow and easy. So, um, you know, hitting hard with those, love ain't no stranger, all or nothing gambler. So kind of pushing the more Zeppelin thing probably quite rightly so, then guilty of love, hungry for love, give me more time, spit it out, standing in the shadow, kind of, yeah, more front loaded, I would say, the the, the running order on side one, um, uh, spit, it out, spit it out of sight and standing in the shadow, it's really strong tracks, you can hear Sykes guitars, a couple of bits, he puts pinch harmonics in, I'm not sure whether he does solos, as maybe one he replaces, you should say, Mel Galley's guitar solos on this album, they're kind of in the Bernie Marsden mould. He's not as good as Marsden. But they're not standing out, uh, you know, what Sykes would have done, I don't know. Obviously, we know what he did on 87. But I prefer listening to the US remix. Um, uh, the running order I've got is the 29 reissue, which is, um, again, it's Gambler, Slide It In, Slow and Easy, Love Ain't a Stranger, Give Me More Time, Standing in the Shadow. It's different again. Um, so it's kind of fairly muddled, um, but if I if I was to pick one to listen to, I would go for the US remix, um, uh, and I do think it's a good record. I think it's a good eight out of ten. Um, I think it's a lot better than Saints and Sinners. Um, I think it's more consistent and come and get it. Um, obviously, ready and willing. A lot of people would, you know, pitch as a classic album, but some people may not like this. Um, uh, but um, I do, uh, and I just find it interesting. I think credit to Martin Birch, he he recorded the band and got the sound right on his version, and Keith Olsen, it was cool to remix it and make it as good and better, different. Um, it's not like something like Built or Destroy by Matt Oshenka where the US remix is marginally better, but because the sound wasn't captured at the source at the time, you know, it's that classic thing, you can't polish a turd. Um, so, you know, if you've not got it right the first time, you're not going to write the second, but it was right the first time, uh, you know, it just got a different interpretation. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's um, uh, leave it there. So that's uh, White Snake Slide It In. Uh, check it out, uh, 40 years old today. Remember to share and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.